In the early morning hours of September 16, 2004, a vicious hurricane that went by the name of Ivan made landfall on the Alabama shoreline, devastating the communities of Gulf Shore, the Dolphin Islands, and Orange Beach, Alabama. The communities rebuilt, and over the last 16 years, all has been normal. That is, until tropical cyclone by the name of Sally entered the Gulf of Mexico in what would be a record-setting year for hurricanes and tropical cyclones. Sally, initially taking aim at the coastal communities of Louisiana that just took a beating from Hurricane Laura just weeks prior, would slow down, rapidly intensify, and make landfall as a powerful Category 2 hurricane, devastating the community 16 years to the date at nearly the exact same time as Ivan. This is the story from ground zero through the eyes of a storm chaser. Good evening, everybody. The date is September 12th, 2020, and I am yet again making a mad dash to the Gulf Coast because we got another tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico, which will likely become a hurricane either sometime tonight or tomorrow morning. So we're gonna see how she does. Her name is Sally right now, and what has been a record-breaking hurricane season. They all haven't made landfall, but there has been so many named hurricanes that we are almost in the Greek alphabet. So if we get all the way to W, we will now be naming our hurricanes Alpha, whatever the heck names that we have continued on after that. But right now, we are an S for Sally uh, in mid-September. Right now, the reason I'm heading down, she's only a tropical storm right now, and a lot of the models are only saying it's gonna be a category one hurricane, but the Gulf of Mexico is very warm, wind shear is very low, and as we have seen time and time again with computer models, anything can happen in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, the Hurricane Center just recently updated to a high-end category one landfall, and my gut tells me that it's going to be a high-end category two at landfall, which the WRF and a couple of the other models are showing right now. So it got me, it baited me enough to get down here. Uh, this is gonna be a huge rainmaker because this hurricane is going to slow way down as it approaches the Louisiana Mississippi coast. Not gonna lie to you guys, that might be a new record for a gas tank. Not bad, Subi, not bad. Another exciting day in the life of Aaron Rigsby. It's 2 a.m., tired. Found myself driving overnight again. But that's okay. Stephen Jones has been nice enough to open his house to me. I just gotta get there. Got the crew together here in Moore, Oklahoma. Time is about one o'clock on September 13th, 14th. And we're about to begin our trek to the Gulf. Hannah or not Hannah. Sally is having some issues right now. We're not really sure what to think, but regardless, storm surge and flooding is gonna be a big problem for the New Orleans area, all the way up to uh, around the Gulfport, Mississippi area. So I think we're still gonna chance it. Anything can happen in the Gulf, it's still very warm. Once that wind shear settles down, anything can happen. So we're gonna see and get this truck underway. Got the boys, got the food. Now we just need Sally to do her thing. Water shoes, what six dollars. Six dollar water shoes. Fuck, he says everything. Can't go wrong with these either. Which one has more meat? This one? Or this one? I think it's this one. Cool. <laughs> Essentials number two. What did you buy? Some sausage, Bucky's barbecue. Our last good meal before the entire state of Louisiana floods. Mm -hmm. Again. Night one complete at the hotel. Time for sleep before I intercept tomorrow. Let's do it. Category slow, and that's what we really want to focus on as we head into the next several days. It's just the duration of all of these threats from Sally. So we could have some big problems with this slow Now, don't just assume that this is going to go right down the middle of the tunnel. Uh, and even if it goes along the left or the right hand side, don't be surprised if there's some meandering and some stalling. 
As we awoke from some much needed sleep in our hotel in Jackson, Mississippi, it was becoming clear that morning we needed to reposition our target for the east, towards Biloxi, and even potentially further into Alabama. Sally's track was still unknown, but on our way to the ocean front, we were reminded of the devastating effects Mother Nature can leave in her wake. We passed through the town of Bassfield, Mississippi, where just five months earlier, the largest tornado in state's history tore a path of destruction two and a half miles wide for over 100 miles, and eventually ending not far from where we documented it, near the small town of Heidelberg, Mississippi. Well, the day of landfall, or I should say the day before landfall has come, it is September 13th or 14th? September 14th? 14th. September 14th on a Monday. Um, Sally has been really struggling uh, to get organized until within the last hour. Right now we saw a 7 millibar drop within the last hour in Cat 2 flight level winds. So it is apparent that Sally is only undergoing rapid intensification yet again on a tropical system. And we should see landfall sometime tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this latest development is concerning for the Gulf Coast states because a 7 millibar drop in an hour is very impressive. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Cat 2 here pretty soon or within the next few hours if this keeps up. After completing our trek from Jackson, we arrived in Gulfport, Mississippi, where preparations were well underway as dozens of residents began collecting sandbags to protect their homes and businesses from the imminent flooding and powerful storm surge. We spent most of the afternoon scouting locations to ride out the storm from Gulf Shores to Moss Point, Alabama. But with the eastern trends continuing and what was proving to be a forecasting nightmare, we were forced to keep scouting locations even further away from our original target. After hours of searching for locations, Stephen stumbled across a parking garage on the Dauphin Islands of Alabama that had been built after Hurricane Katrina, providing plenty of shelter for us to film from. It was decided this is where we would spend the night and ride out the storm. A local motel was nice enough to open their doors to us and provide us one last good night of sleep before Sally would come on shore. It's always an unsettling feeling staying in places that may or may not be there after the storm passes, and seeing other locals and vacationers seeking shelter in the same areas, you couldn't help but wonder if everyone was going to make it out of this hurricane safely. Can you go a little further down? Our last morning before landfall, we awoke to the winds ripping and roads already beginning to flood due to storm surge as Sally was sitting just 30 miles offshore. And with the bridge shut down in and off the island, we were cut off from civilization and eagerly awaiting Sally's assault on the island. Locals seemed unfazed as they were out for their morning bike ride and dozens of cars out roaming around, impatiently waiting to see what Sally was going to bring. We could only hope these locals were prepared and took the warning seriously. And like most hurricanes, we stayed mobile for as long as we safely could do so before retreating back to our garage. Sally was here and it was time to document her fury. right there.
thing until it goes. Like Serge. That's definitely Surge. I think it's like literally right back there. Yeah. It's traveled a long way. Tea began to settle in, and as Sally worked her way inland, we were treated to our garage to get a couple hours of sleep before the sunrise. The following morning, the extent of the damage was quickly being realized. Navigating the roads like an obstacle course due to downed trees and power lines, multiple homes suffered heavy roof damage, while others were surrounded by floodwaters. Every boat we had seen in the harbor was now at the bottom of the gulf, or now in residents' front yards. Word quickly spread on social media that there were storm chasers on the island. 
which was still shut down to anyone on and off of the island. Our social media pages erupted with messages asking us to check on homes of residents or loved ones as evacuees impatiently awaited to see if they still had a home to come back to. We spent the latter part of the morning and afternoon checking on as many homes as we could and we're happy to report the ones were asked to check on appeared to be unscathed or minor roof damage and we're able to give the folks of Dolphin Island a sigh of relief. Safe and she is super grateful for us checking. It's great. Didn't even have a broken window. She said that she went to, uh, uh, her parents went to go board up her grandparents' house when it was heading for Gulfport. Yeah. Then when it changed its course, they couldn't get back over here to board up their own house. By later that afternoon, it was determined there was no damage to the Bay Bridge and we were allowed to exit the island ahead of schedule. However, while we made our escape, we stumbled across something I had never seen before. Waters were rushing underneath of the bridge like a flash flood and the surge was returning to the Bay Area that had been pushed out from the vicious winds of Sally. Sally made landfall as a strong Category 2 hurricane, claiming the lives of two and causing an estimated $7 to $8 billion in damages just three weeks after the Hurricane Laura billion-dollar disaster.